Hey everybody, hope uh, you're having a great Saturday. I'm killing some time here, so I haven't done this for a while, so I thought I'd come on here live and answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, I really, you ask me anything, just like the, uh, like the post says, I'm more than willing to answer any questions that you have about dogs, anything about behavior, and we'll just hang on tight here for a few minutes, let some uh, people jump on. So hopefully the signal will hold up here and we'll be able to get a good, uh, good group of people watching. So uh, feel free to say hi when you chime in and uh, we'll get rolling with this. So I'm, uh, I'm more than happy to do this with you guys. T taking my daughter to gymnastics. So we're just, while she's doing her thing, I'm gonna do my thing. So uh, it's been a while, like I said. I'm trying to get back to my Tuesday night live thing too for you guys, because I know I had a pretty good, uh, pretty good turnout going with that too, keeping that a regular thing. So uh, I'm hoping to do the same in the future as well. So I would love to hear what's going on with you guys. Uh, any questions that you have about dogs, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Hey Lori, how you doing? There's our first little chime in of the day. Uh, yeah, let me know what state you guys are watching from too. That's always a cool thing to see is to uh, how much this page is growing too. We we're up over 6,000 people on this page, which is pretty insane uh, when I come to think about it. So, but, uh, and yes, it's June 1st and I've got these uh, winter tires finally back off of my car. So a little late to the game, but at least I got it done. So anyways, uh, as always, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you guys may have about dogs or just want to say what's up I have any questions about business anything along those lines I'm I'm uh, kind of an open book when it comes to all this so I'm hoping we can uh, get rolling with somebody here maybe somebody's having an issue or something that you're uncomfortable with at home that's going on with your dog you don't know how to handle or there's a behavior that's happening that uh, maybe you just don't understand so uh, but I'd, I'd love to see where you guys are uh, watching from here too we're up to 11 people here so we're starting to roll along and, and gather some in. So, uh, <laughs> Kelly, when am I opening a place in Maine? That's a hell of a commute, as as you are very uh, well aware of. I mean, Maine is, uh, I mean, I'd love to be able to open places all over the, you know, open facilities all over the place, but man, I cannot clone myself. I, I, I wish in that sense that I could, uh, but, uh, Man, I you know, after 12 years of being around groups of dogs every day, there is nothing that replaces that experience and uh, that knowledge. So unfortunately, I won't be opening anything in Maine. Um, I mean, I've thought about expanding to other places in Vermont kind of near me, but we'll see how that goes. I'm not in a rush to do it. So I've got enough going on at my facility now. So it's... Uh, and I'm starting to do uh, in-homes a little bit more too. Yeah, Sarah, I, I know, I've got some, what are you called, Maynites, Mainers? I don't even know what, what, you're, what you're called. We're Vermonters, so I don't know. Mainerians, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know, I know there's not a lot up in Maine. Chris Potter is up there, she was on my podcast. Um, so, you can always look her up if you guys just need some training needs. I don't know if she does daycare and boarding. I can't remember from when I interviewed her. So, hey, Mark, uh, it is, my car says uh, 61 degrees outside right now. So it's not too bad, but there's no snow. There is snow up on the mountain here still, though. I saw it on my way on Mount Mansfield. There is a little snow uh, still on the mountain, which is crazy. Mainers, mania. Oh, I like the maniac thing. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Mark, what's it like for you in uh, North Carolina? I'm sure you're probably in the 80s or something, right? There was a big heat wave I saw in the south that was like 90s to 100. So, oh, here's our first little one. My dogs don't like other dogs. Is there still a chance with training we could get to the point of getting them to feel comfortable around other dogs? It's a, uh, Aaron, that's a, uh, it's not a quick process uh, by any means. It takes some time. And here's the thing, especially when dogs come to us for socializing. I always have to preface their stay, their boarding, everything. I always have to preface it with, just because your dogs get along with other dogs here at my facility doesn't mean they're going to get along with dogs uh, 
out in reality, out in public. Now, I'd like to think that we set a foundation for it. So if you meet a nicer dog out in public, that that will certainly help. Uh, but there's no guarantee with that, unfortunately. So, I, I, you know, I, I wish there was. However, you know, it's like kids in school. You know, you'd like to think that they're taught well, that they have a good foundation of learning, a good foundation of making the right decisions. Um, and then be able to take that out into society and be able to make those good decisions out there. You know, it's much like socializing dogs. You kind of hope that to a degree, they're kind of on their own when they, they meet other dogs, obviously with your supervision, but sometimes it's, it's a little difficult. I, you know, I always tell people you can't, you never know when the lassie's going to come around the corner, Rin Tin Tin or Cujo. Um, so it's all a part of understanding you know, body language and knowledge and all that kind of stuff. And, and it takes some time, but you know, in order for us to be able to help out the dogs, you know, that, that come to us strictly for socializing, we have to learn about that dog too. So I, I, you know, that's why our shortest program is two weeks. I can't look at your dog and, and be like, after five minutes and be like, yeah, I, I know your dog and I know all of his body language and his tendencies. So it, it takes some time and it takes some time around other dogs. Um, to learn and obviously we have to start with a controlled setting it's no different than those kids in a classroom we have to start in a controlled setting uh, for them to learn before we can move on so it's 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 all a part of it um, it's all a part of the learning process so uh, let's see how do I get my Chowini to use her pads at nighttime I crate her at night but really don't like doing that well there's absolutely nothing wrong with crating your dog at night. I'm crating Gemma at night. She sleeps soundly uh, with no problem whatsoever. You know, right where she is, you know, she's not going to get into anything. And I know what to expect when I wake up in the morning. So I am going, this is probably not the answer that you wanted, but I'm going to give the answer that I, I think people need to hear is that, you know, having your dog in a crate at night will mean that they're not going to create havoc while you are sleeping, um, you know? If there's house training accidents, then yeah, then we have to talk about that and maybe change schedules or routines around a little bit. Uh, make sure water and food isn't available later in the evening. So that's, um, yeah, I don't know if that's the question or that's the answer you wanted to hear, Brandy, but that's uh, that's my suggestion. I, I'm Gemma's 14 months old. She's, she's still in a crate at night. Actually, when we get home from daycare, um, She'll have a tendency, it's not every day, but she'll have a tendency of going upstairs, uh, finding her crate and crashing, going to sleep with the door wide open. So, uh, Michelle, hi from Pittsburgh. My dog tries to be the fun police when dogs are playing. She sits and barks. How do you redirect her and become calmer? Uh, to me, I'm going to create more space there, Michelle. A space is always going to be your best friend. Now, that space might be 50 feet. It might be 500 feet. But I would like to find that magical threshold. Threshold is a big, huge term in the dog training world. So I don't usually like to get into the jargon of it too much with everybody. But threshold work is, is important. Now, um, with that threshold, let's say it's 500 feet. Let's say it's a long ways away. At that point, whether you want to work obedience with your dog, whatever you want to do with your dog at that point, I, I, it doesn't bother me. However, we want to start moving forward. So if you're at that 500 foot line uh, and you want to move closer, I would move five feet closer and then immediately back away, uh, back to your threshold again. So I, I'm going to make it so I don't, I have to carry this mindset, this calm, relaxed mindset with me across that threshold. Now I'm not looking to get five feet away from those dogs playing and barking and doing their thing. Um, I'm looking at getting 495 feet away with the same mindset and then I go back to 500 feet. So the dog understands, okay, we're going to test the waters. Can you do it? You're not sure? Then we're going to go back. So it's all a part of, of uh, the process. And look, you can't put a time frame on it. You can't put a, um, an amount of days on it as far as how long it would actually take to get done. Um, plus the intensity of, of the dog playing is also a part of it too. So it's going to take some time. Be patient with you um, and be patient with your dog as well. Uh, I don't know if it's Aja, maybe Aja. Aja, tips for getting my dog used to running next to my bike. I'm hoping you actually saw the video that we posted, that I posted yesterday of Matt teaching 
uh, Charlie how to uh, do it next to the bike with him. Uh, the video's already had over a thousand views to it. I, people are loving it. I didn't realize it was going to actually uh, uh, kind of create the storm that it did. So I, I would suggest going back to that. It's all in slow steps. You can't just jump on your bike, hook them and go. Uh, we have a, an attachment on the side of the bike a terrible name it's like doggy walk plus or something like that it's a metal bar that actually attaches to the seat post and it does an amazing job um, but go back and look you know at first you know the dog is hooked to that and then hooked to a harness because obviously we don't want any stress on the collar if for some reason the dog moves in one direction or the other so um, go back look at that it, it's a slow process of getting them used to walking next to it while you're walking your bike uh, all the way up to them doing a trot. We're not using that bike to go fast and to do the, have this explosive energy uh, because if you do that over a long period of time, over a number of days, you're actually gonna start to create stamina. Nobody wants stamina uh, when it comes down to everything. Stamina, I mean, you start running your dog three miles a day now, guess what next year is? Four or five miles a day and nobody really wants that. So it's it, it's, you know, I don't know many people that want it. Uh, m most people are having a hard time understanding, um, or not understanding, but most people have a hard time fulfilling their dog's energy level needs now, so we don't need to increase it at all. Uh, Mary, tips on how to get my dog not to jump on everyone when meeting them, including us. Um, Mary, I would put that dog on a leash inside your house. You know, there's a big misconception that dog that leashes are just an, a, a tool to be used outside of the house. And the fact of the matter is, le leashes are used more by trainers inside, um, as much as outside. Sometimes, if not more, inside than outside, depending on what they're what they're working on. Uh, and so, to me, I'm not going to I'm going to put that dog on a leash, and I'm not going to let that dog experience getting into that hyper state of mind when somebody walks through the door. I have to create some space. You guys, space is is I'm trying to think if it's ever a bad thing, and I don't know if there's a, some other trainers that are watching this, but I don't, I don't know. I can't think right off the tip of my tongue if space is actually ever a negative. Creating space, I, 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 I don't know. Unless your dog is in a good state of mind and things are going really, really well, space still, oh yeah, still. I, I don't even know how it would be a negative. So. I'm not gonna let that dog approach any company or let that company approach the dog until the dog is in a mindset that I want, which is to me, I want it to be more relaxed, chilled hang and hung out. And that means sometimes that, hey, your dog may not be able to greet anybody for you know four or six months. Now, greeting is different. Greeting is different than being in the same room. Greeting is walking up, sniffing, jumping, that kind of thing. It's okay to be in the same room. Remember, dogs don't need to go nose to nose to meet. And dogs don't need to go like nose to person uh, to meet either. So don't think that your dog is not meeting somebody by not walking up to him and jumping on him. I think your company is probably gonna be thankful that you're being that much more respectful to them for not letting the dog jump and keeping space. Um, but again, I'm not gonna move that dog closer to people until that dog tends to chill out. I'm hoping, I gotta get a video of this for you guys because I, I've got a pretty good technique that I've learned and kind of experimented with, and it's how it's what we do to reunite our board and trained dogs with the client, um, because sometimes that can go overboard, and and it's a great technique to use for people to understand uh, and practice with with uh, their guests at home. So I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping I've got to I want it, I just haven't come up with the right uh, environment and the right setup yet. That's all I, because I want to do it right for you for the the first time. Um, Kelly, are you from Michigan? You sound like Dax Shepard. You are, I don't know if you are the other one or you are the same person that has said that, but I, you are the second person in about two or three weeks that has told me that. I am not from Michigan. The other crazy part about you saying that is that um, my podcast, the one state that it's been downloaded in, so I, I'm, I have no idea. That's crazy that that's happened twice here to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, hoping. Good. I have four rescue pitties from New York. They get along with each other. They play good with my brother's shepherds. My question is, I have a friend who has a female mixed pup. He had me bring one of my pits to his house. His dog attacked my pit. I had to force her mouth open to get my boy free. 
He wants to try again. Should we try to park or would my dog fear her? Do not try it again. You need a trainer. Or that his dog needs a trainer. That no, don't don't try that again. Nope. Not unless you have a professional. Absolutely not. No, no, no. You you no. <laughs> no, you that, that you've already created an look a, a, an association has been created already. Okay? And it, and it's been a negative one. I do not want to put the dog right back into that same scenario because I'm guessing, as everybody does and as everybody should, uh, without professional help, that if a fight happens, those dogs need to be separated, obviously, for safety issues. I, and, and here's the thing. You, you bring those dogs back together, once they catch that scent, there is a very good chance, a very good chance that those dogs are going to have that association and that memory and it's going to be game back on again. So I, changing the setting may help a little teeny tiny bit, uh, but n no, I, I'm not, I am not comfortable with that at all, at all, not without professional help. No. And how, and look here, I, I'm going to even say this. Think of how irresponsible it would be for me as a trainer to say, go ahead and try that again. Go ahead and try that again. And then your dogs get into a fight and guess who's gonna come knocking on my door? You, you see what I mean? So that is where, and I hope you listen and people listen to this whole little conversation and not take that little blurb out because it's very contextual. It is not. You cannot put those dogs back together without professional help. You cannot. You are, you are, it's a, it's a big risk, big risk. Uh, so please don't do it without any help. Mary, how far out do you book for board and trains? I, Mary, it depends on what you need and, and time frame. So I would say just give us a call on Monday if you want to. And, uh, and, and we can certainly, we can see what we can work out for you. So. And sometimes, I don't, depending on where you're from, sometimes it's, you know, uh, in homes work better than board and trains too. So I'm starting to push in homes. I don't, I'm enjoying them more and I'm starting to get more accomplished actually. So in some cases, not all cases. Uh, Arthur, okay, wait, hold on. I gotta go back here. Good, Mary, yes, okay, good. Brandy, what's the best way to stop a puppy from barking for attention while playing? Um, well, if you're playing, then the energy level is up already. So it's an in, it's a increased state of mind or intense state of mind. So I, I'm, I, there's, there's a little, I'm a little befuddled here because from barking for attention while, so if you're playing with the dog already, you're giving it attention and now you're saying it wants more attention. So I'm not sure where you're going with that. I might need some inf more information before I can actually give you a little tidbit so uh how can i train my dog not to bark at people when they walk by arthur i you know i'm i'm guessing the the picture that i'm kind of putting in my brain is that your house is maybe right next to a sidewalk or something along those lines um i mean there's a there's a number of different ways you can do this from using positive reinforcement to using leash work um you know, the positive reinforcement part of it would be, and it all would come down to timing and food and everything. So um, the other the the other part of it would be have, would have, oh my gosh, I can't talk right now. Your other choice would be to put a, a leash on your dog, have him kind of dragging around. Now you have to stage this with somebody outside. You can't stay, you can't do this with like some random person that might walk by. You have to stage it. So you call a friend and say, hey, I'd like to do something with my dog. Uh, but this takes practice. You guys, one thing I want you to understand about these tips that I give you, it will not work just once. It has to be a pattern that you're setting into your dog and creating a new foundation. Look, a lot of times when I post things on here, remember I write on the, uh, on the bottom of it, create new patterns, get new results. A pattern has to be created. A pattern is not created after one, right? After one. I don't know if you ever remember doing it in, in doing math in school and, and learning patterns. And there was usually numbers of like, you know, it might be five, 10, 15. Well, it's a pretty good chance the next pattern, the number in the pattern is 20, right? And it's five, 10, 15, 20. Well, it's a pretty good chance the next one's 25. You can't tell a pattern if I just gave you the number five. So it has to be something that gets um, 
taught to your dog and taught the same way over and over and over and over again. So now you have a pattern that's created and you have that, that foundation that's created. Now you can take that foundation and that pattern and use it elsewhere. Little by little, we don't reintroduce, you know, if your dog doesn't like people and we do it with one person, doesn't mean we get to go to the busiest street, you know, flea market, farmer's market thing in the world. You, you know, it doesn't work that way. So, so Arthur, it takes practice. I, I'd put a leash on your dog, let him kind of drag it around. If he goes up to the window and, and, and barks, I'd probably just grab the leash and walk him away from it. Uh, and then I would drop the leash, let him go back to the window. I'd walk over, I'd grab the leash, I'd walk him away from it because I want to set a pattern to him to let him know if he starts barking, he's actually got to move away from the window. Uh, and sometimes you will actually, sometimes I've heard, um, through doing this enough times that the dog will go bark a couple of times at the window and then will actually back away from the window and sit in the middle of the room because you've created a pattern of what is expected of that dog. So um, you know, the positive reinforcement way would be to put somebody outside, stage it, having them walk by, um, and before your dog even barks, having the right timing of giving your dog food so they understand that that sound out there is a good thing. However, 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 um, the issue with that too is for me, you know, I don't, my neighbors, I, I can't like reach out and touch my neighbor's house. So I also like the idea of the dog barking maybe when somebody walks by or somebody's outside or somebody pulls in my driveway because I can't hear it. So I don't want to snuff out that barking completely either. So there's a number of different ways that you can look at it. Uh, my way is, hey, my dogs will bark. I, I've had solicitors come to my, my house and look, my van is all logoed up, right? I'm sure people see it when they when they pull in. Okay, there's you know there's good chance there's dogs here, and guess what? My dogs are the worst behaved dogs when solicitors come because I don't shut them up. Uh, if somebody comes and knocks on my door and I don't want them there, I open the door just a crack, just a crack, so my dogs can get a whiff and see that it's a stranger, and then they go ballistic and bark and bark like crazy. And guess what? That solicitor can't do talk to me normally in a low voice as I'm talking to you. The guy has to raise his voice. Well, this isn't fun anymore. Why would I come back to this house? This, this, this guy's supposed to be working with dogs and he can't even control his. And I don't care at that moment. I don't want solicitors at my door. So uh, that's, that's where I go with that. Uh, I should never introduce a dog to a new dog in their home environment. I, I mean, you always err on the side of caution. So uh, let's see. My family has an almost two-year-old male golden doodle. We are thinking of adding another dog to the family. Any suggestions? Another boy or girl, same size, breed. We love the golden doodle. So my daughter has a slight allergy. Any advice? We appreciate it. Uh, Noni, I would just get, I mean, get a dog that's less energy than the dog that you have now. Take your time to pick it out. You don't have to rush. Um, and you just, it's the right state of mind and it's the right energy level for you and your environment. If you get a dog that's more energy than what you have now, um, that's gonna send a ripple effect through everything. So it's gotta be less energy unless you are prepared for more energy and you're prepared for the extra work that it will take. So, um, you know, and bringing a new dog in takes a lot of structure and a lot of time. I, you know, I'm sure most people, most dog owners realize that. Uh, and, and, you know, structure is first. Structure is first. That's, I, I can't, I can't stress that enough. Okay, back to the dog that wants attention. Uh, he's trying to get our attention or other dogs, so we will play with him. We play a lot, but this is during calmer times at night before bed. Well, so here's the thing. Um, the more that you guys actually give in to him wanting that attention, uh, you, he's creating a pattern with you guys. So then the pattern is, if I bark, they'll play. Um, so to me, I wanna interrupt that behavior. Now, what does interrupt means? It means you're gonna put a stop to that behavior. It doesn't mean screaming, yelling, hollering, throwing stuff at your dogs, um, any of that. To me, there's we wanna create a polite way to interrupt, to let the dog know that we don't want that kind of behavior. Now, we also have to look at, does that dog have any pent up energy? Is it being walked during the day? Is it being challenged mentally? Uh, because sometimes dogs that are like that can actually be kind of crying for some sort of desire to be challenged on a given, you know, on a given day. So, but before we actually start to sit there and go, 
all right, we just need to shut the dog up. Well, what is the dog actually trying to tell us? You know, if the dog's being walked regularly, has structure regularly, is getting time to play with other dogs regularly, um, you know, and then we look at it and go, okay, is he just being trying to be a punk for the time being? Okay, then we need to do something about it. Um, but I would probably, I, you know, I would look at his, what is his day, what does his day look like? What does he get to do that's going to be fun and challenging for him? Um, and is he being fulfilled in that aspect? See, this is where love, you guys, is not priority one. I'm sorry. I'm going to be the biggest enemy or biggest jerk of a dog trainer you guys probably know by saying love is not priority one to a dog. It isn't. Uh, and and I'm, I'm going to be the, uh, you know, <laughs> probably not well liked for that, but it's true. It It's not. Dogs, they need way more than love. If they just needed love, there wouldn't be any dog trainers. That's all I gotta say about that. Um, let's see. Diane, good to see you too. Arthur, yeah, so when it's at your camp, when he sees other people walking by, it's different too, because now there's an association at your camp and it's different than your home. So absolutely. Uh, Kelly, how is the surrender of the dressage whips going and what do you do now for the unwelcome approach of another dog? when you are walking a dog on leash. Um, Kelly, the we have, I haven't even touched a, uh, one of those whips for, I used one because I needed the handle of it to, to uh, reach in to grab a leash that was hanging on a dog that we had that was aggressive. So instead of reaching my hand in and getting a couple fingers chewed off, um, I needed something that I could reach in to grab the leash. So otherwise I have not touched a lead or touched a whip since August. It's been amazing. Uh, I don't think facilities should be actually be allowed to use them because now, now that I know what I know, uh, which I'm not going to go into depth with with you guys because it's I, I would probably lose you. Now that I know what I know, facilities should not be using whips. If they're using whips, that means their facility, um, and that means their understanding of dogs is probably not where it should be, and that they're pushing those dogs beyond thresholds that they're comfortable with. So yeah, I said it. But that's just where I'm coming from. I have a very strong opinion about it. Um, unwelcome approach with another dog on leash. I mean, or off leash. You got to do what you got to do. So whether you carry a ski pole, a walking stick, anything along those lines, a tennis racket, um, anything. You have to protect yourself and protect your dog. And if you have leash laws, when you get home, the first thing that I would do would be to call your animal control officer. So... Kelly, thank you for loving my approach. Yes, you both, yes. Me and this Dax thing, I don't even know. I know who he is, but that's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. So, yeah. You guys, I, I, uh, I'm very happy. Look, I got to say this because I don't, I don't think I've actually said it to, to you guys on here. I am very happy with where I am right now as a trainer and how I'm training dogs. I, I've been... I have slowed down so much as a trainer. Um, not that I ever tried to be a quick fix kind of guy, because I think if you're looking for a quick fix kind of trainer, I think you're barking up the wrong tree, no pun intended. Um, but I, to me, I've really slowed things down to help owners understand where the problems are stemming from. Where is it starting? How, maybe how did it get started? We may not always know the how, um, but we certainly know the where's, maybe the why's, um, you know, in that that kind of context. So I'm very I'm very comfortable with who I am as a trainer right now. And, and this is why I said I'm kind of, I feel like the in-homes. If I'm not dealing with a dog that is, that needs socialization, I'm kind of feeling like the in-homes are, are where it's at. Um, I, I'm starting to really enjoy seeing the whole logistics of, of the home environment, everything that's going on, who's there, the ins, the, who literally who is in and out of the house all day, how busy it is, what the dog deals with, how they look at it, everything, where they get to be walked. I mean, there's a, a, a number of things to look at um, in that aspect. So I, I'm, I'm truly enjoying it because it also helps me slow, slow the client down too. So Diane, thank you. I that that means a lot to me. She said that uh, she loves that I'm willing to share my knowledge at no cost. I I am not. 
as you guys know, I don't, I don't push anything at all. Um, and I, I'm, I, to me, this is what this is all about. I, and uh, you know, the crazy part is the, the more that I actually share the, bi the busier work has gotten, I, it, which you wouldn't think that, but, uh, I, I, it, it's a cool feeling for me to, to have that I can help out 6,000 people, um, at one time, or, you know, over a period of time that are on this page. And maybe there's a little tidbit here or there that they may help. And, and I, I can't tell you the amount of messages I get now from people that say, Hey, you helped me six months ago. You gave me some advice on so-and-so and I've started doing it and we've seen a change. What else can I do? Or, you know, there's sometimes those messages that are really very cool. And I, and they're both here and on Instagram too. And it's, it's a pretty cool feeling, but I, I'm, like I said, I'm, I've slowed things way down. I've, I'm understanding dogs at a deeper level, a level that I didn't even know really existed. I mean, how would you if you don't, if somebody doesn't teach you what two plus two is, how do you know it's four? So it's all a part of it. And uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm very happy with, with where I'm at right now. So anyways, you guys, I the one the last thing that I wanted to touch on uh, before I cut you loose is my post that I put up yesterday about dogs that come to daycare that don't play or dogs that play dates or um, I can't remember the other one that I put on there was play dates the daycare or dog park yeah and you know I there's been a number of clients that I've had in the past that have asked me when they pick up their dog from daycare did my dog play nope well gosh do you think do you think she's happy? Do you think she's having a good time? And my answer is always, I, just like what I put on the post. Look, some people like sports, some don't. Some people like um, politics, some don't. Some people like religion, some don't. There's, there's, there's different aspects of it. And unfortunately, right now, we look at dogs, just like the dog that I was talking about earlier that was jumping up onto somebody. Unfortunately, we look at that dog and think, wow, if he's not jumping, He's not a happy guy. Well, what's wrong with him? He's not jumping. He's not hyper. Uh, must be he's not happy at all. Uh, and that could be the, that's the farthest thing from the truth. You know, there's a lot of times when you can see a dog walk up to another dog, kind of their head low and that tail's going nicely and respectfully. And you know those dogs are happy to see each other. They're just so happy. But they've already set boundaries with each other of jumping, of getting overbearing, overreactive overexcited in those situations that it just takes some time um, for them to figure it out. Once they figure it out, man, they can have the most respectful relationship ever. Uh, you know, and this is the other aspect of it too. Some dogs, well, I should say some people like to take a walk on a beach. It's quiet. It's peaceful. Some people like candlelight dinners. It's quiet. It's peaceful. Peaceful. Some people like to sit in the mosh pit of ACDC concerts and that's great. That's, that's what you like, that's what you enjoy. It doesn't necessarily mean you should be in that mosh pit every single day for every person that you meet. That is not healthy at all. And in some cases, dogs are like that. Every person that they meet is, it's overboard. They are way overpowering. Uh, and, I, and I feel like if we work on giving our dogs times to play and also making sure that we have the structure there to uh, make that so they are more respectful to us to our guests then we could live in a wonderful world with dogs but those patterns and those foundations need to be set and it takes some time uh, so if you have a dog that doesn't play as long as he's healthy and everything's fine it's okay uh, if you have a dog that's overbearing and jumping on people and causing issues that is not okay it takes some time and you know to me Creating those new patterns is just like what I say, create new patterns and get new results. Um, so if, if your dog doesn't play during those times, it's okay. Dogs can still be social without being going freaking nuts uh, in those settings. And look, we it, Serena and I, and I have talked about this on our chit chat episodes on the podcast. Some dogs come to daycare to play. Some dogs come to daycare to hang out, kind of wiggle around everybody, have a good time. Some dogs come to daycare to sleep. Um, so look, if you go to a party, some people go there to drink. Some people just go to be there to be social. 
Um, and some people go there because they got to kill time and they're thinking about the barbecue they want to get to later. So we, for some reason, we categorize dogs as always having to, having to be hyper, having to be excited. Um, and it's unfortunate because those are the issues. That's one of the biggest issues that cause, causes problems. So, um, yeah, that's, that's where the structure comes into play. So I hope I've given you guys some, some information here that you can go with this weekend and maybe start to create some new patterns with you guys, with your dogs and, and everything. And, and I'm hoping to get back to these Tuesday night lives that I started to do for a while too. So that's my plan. I'm hoping to start it up soon. So you guys have a great Saturday. Thank you for jumping on here. I appreciate it. Thanks for being a part of this. Um, and I, you know, I, all, all I ask is that you guys share this page. That's all. I, I don't need any money. You don't need to send me any money. I, it's weird when I hear trainers talking about sending, giving people, sending money to them and thanking them for all their information and everything. I don't know. That's, that makes me so uncomfortable. It makes me cringe. So all I can ask is that if, is for you to share this stuff. That's all. That's all I need. I don't, I don't, I don't need the money from Facebook to, to do any of that stuff. So you guys have a great weekend. Great, great weekend. And uh, we'll be probably back on Monday with a whole bunch of posts of our newborn and trains that just got here this week. So see you guys.